Welcome everyone to another edition of Wednesday Night Shooting. I am here with Andrew M. Swift, and of course, I am Tanya Rogers. Uh, I didn't. I don't know if you know, but my middle initial is also M. So yay! Yay! Uh, <clears throat> tribute to the troops just ended. So. We can we can just banter about that because you were there and oh, I saw it. you. Oh God! Times I was like, "There's Andrew, look! Oh, look at him!" On my phone, literally every time I was on camera, <laughs> <laughs> I was, it looks like I'm not paying attention, but I'm taking pictures. Is what I was doing. I saw you. Yeah, I saw you. So yeah. the big thing that I that I took away from this show is that brains is so much better than he used to be on the microphone. Oh yeah, for sure. Like so much better. And like, no, he's not CM Punk, but very few people are. And considering the crop of people to work with, he's one of like the more improved talkers from like, just considering who all the faces are on both brands, main event level. The only guy who can talk better is Dean Ambrose. Mm -hmm. Well, AJ, I think AJ talks better. He's not a face. Oh, sorry. I, I, I did not hear you say face. My bad, my bad. The, the, the thing about it is like, you know, he's just dead as a face and nobody's ever gonna get behind him because Vince is so stubborn. But like, mm -hmm. if I can just imagine him when he's standing there talking, but his whole demeanor, the way he holds himself, the way he carries himself, says bad guy. So juxtapose that to what he's saying, and you're like, no, dude, I still don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it was, was kind of surreal, because, like, he, uh, if, if folks didn't watch Tribute to the Troops, Roman came out and did, like, the opening, like, we're so happy to be here promo with all of you, blah, blah, blah. And it was funny, because his music hit and he got booed. And I was like, this is tribute to the troops. I feel like we shouldn't boo him like <laughs> at this point in time. So that was that was a weird juxtaposition. Like even when he was in the ring, people were booing him. And I was like, this is awkward. Um, so I, I was just standing there for that. I was, cause that's not really my whole gimmick, the whole patriotism stuff. But I was like, well, this is weird. <laughs> this is deeply uncomfortable. Right. But I was just imagining, like, if he actually, like, the moment, the second he stands in the ring and gives a heel interview, motherfuckers are going to cheer him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where he's like, screw all you guys. You never liked me. I've tried my best. I'm tired of this shit. Like, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, that's what we want to see. And he's probably going to be like, you know what? Fuck it. I give up. <laughs> the other thing when they did the whole new day uh mm -hmm. bullet club which the only reason i care about bullet club is because of aj mm -hmm. i'm sorry the club sucks to me yeah. like they've had a, they've had enough time it's not the booking they suck they don't they show me nothing absolutely nothing to say that they deserve like a higher spot in the car with their matches maybe like carl anderson's okay luke gallows is just no he he wrestles awkward and no and then they walk up and they're like do you hear this they're saying that they're the best group ever and then ambrose is like roman like can you believe that and roman just like nah nah that was perfect yeah perfect I was like, that's the guy he pretty much needs to be yeah. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that asshole right there. But it was an enjoyable show. Listen, I don't know if the only because I know they fucked with the crowd because Roman did not get booed on my TV. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't see the. I didn't watch the first part of it on TV because uh, I was taking a nap because I take naps. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, that's funny. That's hilarious. Cause he was totally booed. He was absolutely booed. 
but the thing I wanted to say is when when I heard the crowd chant, "We want Sasha," Sha oh, no, I can't talk. yeah. Crowd chant, "We want Sasha" during the Bailey Dana Brooke match. I took it as. Charlotte had just interfered. Yes. So they were not, expecting That's not wrong. That's not Sasha wrong. It didn't seem like they were saying, screw these guys. Yeah, no, it wasn't like a Sasha CM Punk level chant. Um, but it was it was still disheartening because the crowd never at any point like got behind a We Want Bailey chant, and I tried. And you know what, I'm kind of bummed that there wasn't a microphone like next to me because I was like yelling throughout so much of SmackDown and Tribute to the Troops. <laughs> and I like only, the only time I hurt myself is when Shane made the rematch between Becky and Alexa, and you just hear some dork yell, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is me, oh, yeah. that is shoot, that is me. <laughs> If you watch SmackDown and watch that segment, because I'm literally just out of camera shot for that whole little bit. Um, but yeah, so I tried to just, I tried to start a, a Let's Go Bailey chant for like, and I chanted it solo for like seven times in a row. I was, and then it picked up a little bit, but never like We Want Sasha was far less, ten times louder, and yeah. it's it's not a good sign, you know, like. No. When 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 you're gonna have her lose again and then turn heel, even though the crowd Instagram, desperately, I just saw I, it Instagram, day. yeah, yeah. Was oh. they, they, they tribute to the truth, and they called her the Raw Women's Champion, and I'm like, fucking Christ, guys, come yeah. on, <laughs> yeah, come on, people. Maybe they're yeah. trying to maybe they're trying to swerve us, and Sasha will win. <laughs> no, I just, I just think right. Uh, no, I just think they're so used to Charlotte being the champion. I mean, it could be an honest mistake, but even if it's an honest mistake, it's a it's a it's a bad sign it's that a like sign. it's just assumed, you know. Yes. So yeah, that, that was a fun little show. Yeah, that was. Fun. I also liked that they actually put with some stakes in it and Cesaro and Sheamus mm. will get another crack at New Day. And I I uh I know I haven't been the biggest New Day fan, but like I think it's lame that you have them break the record and then they lose it the next week. Mm -hmm. I think that's lame. Yeah. So I would say let them lose it at Royal Rumble. Let the New Day cheat and then get a little heat and have them actually feud with Sheamus and Cesaro and then have Sheamus and Cesaro win it. But I, what I think is going to happen is they're going to drop the titles and then they're going to feud with them and they're going to rematch at Royal Rumble. Mm. Oh, another thing I wanted to say, because, and this ties in with what we're about to talk about, uh, <clears throat> uh, traffic stop. Oh boy! End of the line. No, I mean roadblock. End yeah. of the line. Yeah. Um, Kevin Owens says something, and the light bulb kind of went out of off in my head. It's like everybody's assuming that Roman Reigns is about to become a double champion. I don't think so. S specifically, because Finn Balor is lurking in the background. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor would be a lit ass WrestleMania match, but I don't think that that's the direction they're going to go. When Kevin Owens said that Roman was lucky that the United States Championship wasn't on the line, that brought me back to when people were like, well, why is not Roman's title on the line? That's because they don't want to put the US title on, on Kevin, Kevin Owens. Owens. Yeah. That's why his title isn't on the line. Um, and also I would be so vindicated if Kevin Owens wins because of that. That is my whole theory. This whole time, Roman's still been in the main event is because like Baylor went down, so yep. he had to be there. And that was that was my whole thing. And oh, I just cannot wait. That's the only reason I'm looking forward to that match to the moment when Roman loses. Don't care how, <laughs> but like, cause like people are like I just want to see double champion for the haters and all I don't I don't care about people who don't like him so I don't care what they think right yeah 
did you watch Raw or did you watch uh, the whole show? What happened on Raw? I did watch Raw. I watched Raw. Was I cranky during it? I can't remember. You were cranky because they didn't feed oh, the, right. the two stars. <laughs> so. The two stars had the night off. Yeah. The two Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks were not. Actually, I will I will go back and make a point about tribute to the troops. Um because I spent I spent decent money on those seats. I mean, those are very good seats, as you saw. I spent decent money on them, and I was, and basically like, I mean, SmackDown was gonna be lit anyway, and it was. It was totally lit. Um, but I was really hoping to see Sasha Banks. I was really hoping. I wanted to have a moment where I'd be like, "Wow, this is so fucking cool." Like so. To anyone who's like, this isn't a stars-driven business, I paid money to see Sasha Banks. I didn't get her. That was right. sad. I did was sad, but like, you make stars that people want to pay money to see. Don't just be like, oh, WWE's in town. That's fun. That's not, you know. But if you make people that you're like, I need to go see this person, that's how you make money. But I don't know. Yeah. That's that. I I agree with you. I absolutely agree. Um, well, let's let's get into it because it was the go home, and we, they they do have a pay per view. Yep. And um, away from that show was that Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns need to get get back together and form a tag team. Oh, for sure. Seth Rollins was actually interesting in that main event, <laughs> like. Right. Mm. I don't know what it is. He got near Roman and he was he like his he was flippity doo da and <laughs> like the way he broke up that pin by pushing Yeah, out, like, yeah, that was good. It's like somebody had that idea. And I wanna say it was one of those guys that had that idea. Because you know, I, by the way, in that match, all of those guys in that triple threat, like I said, get fucked up together. Oh, they, for sure travel together so that was another reason why the main event was so lit uh i'm proud of new day for um breaking that record they deserve it like it's not it's not just because they wanted to get demolition out of record books it's they wanted that but also new day has been single-handedly holding up the division since forever and so uh what else the thing with bailey and like i'm kind of seeing people's point please stop this <laughs> <laughs> please uh, like let's 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 just be, let's not let's not do anything else and let's not do anything leave it else. Be. Let's, happen. let's move on with our lives <laughs> did you did you see her tweet today yes I okay did. all right Cedric Alexander yeah. and tell, Tell Alicia Fox, I said, Say hey. hey. Yeah. And just Cedric yeah. responded and was like, I'm keeping my distance or something. I was just like, well, my response when I saw that was like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> See, I, like, wasn't I, on the fuck this. I wasn't on fuck this until I saw that tweet. Because I was like, this means this shit is going to continue. And nobody yeah. needs this. Nobody like, needs all, this. Yeah. Alicia Fox has a great Northern Light suplex. She, she can play like a crazy person pretty well. Mm-hmm. But other than that, there is no reason to see Alicia Fox. You know, if you're going to have her be his girlfriend, have her involved with the men. Yeah. You know, don't do not do this. <laughs> Whatever, anything with this. I'd rather Bailey be getting squashed like a bug every week by Nia Jax. Because then maybe she can develop some character. Yep. Seriously, no. you're right. Yeah. <laughs> this no, 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 no. I don't I don't want to see this. It's I not, thought the Sami Zayn stuff. Good. What do you think about the whole Mick Foley, Sami Zayn? Oh, I actually like that segment. I, I like I like the whole bit. Even I like even Mick's part. I mean, like Mick was doing Mick his little Mick stuff these days, but I thought he was good. I I like the whole like I thought the trade was <laughs> first of all. How funny is it, again, that the Raw crowd gets so excited that someone's going to get traded to SmackDown because they want to see them on SmackDown? 
now. And I'm like, Stephanie, you're at Raw. You're at Raw. They don't care. SmackDown's a babyface show. Seriously. That's crazy. No, but uh, I thought it was good. I I really liked. I re I really thought that that was the best segment Mick Foley has done since he came back, uh, by like yeah. a pretty big margin. I thought I thought like the setup for it was clever, and I thought both guys were good. I thought I really I'm digging Sammy right now, big time. Like there's not a whole lot in the, in the men's division that is interesting, but Sammy and Braun. Sammy and Braun and this feud are is kind of like it's it's got my attention. Yeah, uh, yeah, Braun. I gotta see a little bit more from him in the ring, but mm -hmm. as far as the gimmick and the way he carries himself, I can appreciate. I can always appreciate a monster. Everybody, like every every wrestling show, needs a monster to come in, wreck shit, make people piss themselves. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, you yeah. know. And at least now they have a monster that shows up every week, is and talks for himself instead of a monster who shows up when he wants to. <laughs> it has Paul Heyman. Oh yeah. Bore the shit out of me. <laughs> Cause that's the that was my initial draw to Brock. He was a fucking beast. He's a monster, you know. I don't need him to be anything other than that. But you know his his stuff worth than a while ago and bronze fine he we, it seems like he wins his matches with a different finish every time yeah and, and that's good because you like you don't know when the finish is coming so he hits the move and he covers somebody and that might be it <laughs> that might be all she wrote mm -hmm. i i like that uh what else happens on this long ass show the, uh, Jackie so. Boy. Jackie Boy. Let's talk Jackie about Jackie Boy. Boy. Oh, man. First of all, push him to the moon. Push him push to the damn. The Seriously. Title, except for the women's championship <laughs> on him, including tag by himself. By because, himself. like, I marked so hard when he came and was like, I am announcing my intentions <laughs> to interfere in this match. I was like, this is so boss. Like, I'm in love. Well, I was in love. Like, the first time I saw him, I was like, yes, this dude. I don't care about any of these other cruiserweights. Jackie boy. <laughs> I love me. Some Jackie boy. It's, it's so great to, like, hear the crowd. You can audibly like hear the crowd gaining more and more appreciation for him like every time he comes out and like yeah when he did when he said the whole like i'm <laughs> announcing i'm announcing my intentions to interfere in this match the crowd was like yeah like yeah that's awesome you know so that was yeah like, and like you're a scoundrel and then the scoundrel chant started up and i was like oh man he's already all he's doing is saying words and people are chanting them and that's always a good sign uh, really did you see his bit on tribute to the troops? Did you see yes, the I did. And I thought it was <laughs> did the double axe handle? Oh man. I yeah. it's a shame that the camera didn't stay on that spot for like ten seconds because I was losing my shit in the background. <laughs> like literally <laughs> two feet away, I was losing my shit on camera, but they like switched away. I was like, oh come on. I was very bummed about that. I'm not so, gonna lie, but uh, yeah, he's a hoot. He's just he's fun. He's fun. fun yeah, and you could tell like, oh, the support is gonna swell for him. Like, once they actually give him a good storyline, God, it's it's Vince, and apparently Vince is running two hundred five live, and that's where Jackie Boy has been getting some good feature. Yeah, so. One could assume Vince is all in on this guy, and if he is, I'm like, yeah, well, can you take him out of the cruiserweight division? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they're he's trying to get that division over. I can understand, but like, mm -hmm. seriously, um, thing about that before we go on to predictions. Um, I, I, what? I just want to ask you this question, and then you uh, can go ahead with your thought. Do you yeah. think? 
no, wait a minute. How how outlandish is it that they're calling Rich Swan? Oh my God. The outlandish Rich Swan. What 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 is outlandish about him? Right. <laughs> like, like you you keep saying that word. I don't think you know what that word means. <laughs> like. Outlandish, adjective, first definition, looking or sounding bizarre or unfamiliar. Yeah, I don't think that really fits. I don't think that really fits. Yeah, what's bizarre about him? He's just a dude with a lot of energy. Yeah, he's like a happy-go-lucky baby face, and we've seen plenty of those guys. <laughs> right? He reminds of, like, junkyard dog, really. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that the I don't know why they come up with like words for people like that. Like, there's it's so not needed. Like, I get that they're like, it's like, oh, we're gonna brand him this way, the outlandish. Nobody with any marketing like background would be like, yes, outlandish is what we're gonna want to market somebody as. <laughs> that totally just rolls off the tongue, right. It's it's ridiculous. I just I cannot. Every time they say it, I roll my eyes roll literally sure. roll in the back of my head. <laughs> All the way. Like, what are you doing? He's getting over. Stop it. Right? You don't need. You don't need to call him outlandish. Seriously, call Drew oh, Gulak shit. outlandish or some shit. <laughs> Drew, Drew Gulak. It's actually a bummer that they didn't show the entrances for the cruisers because I was in Drew Gulak's face from a distance of like a foot, yelling at him about how Catch Point exists still. And then, and then, and then it came. I swear to God, I was doing like I was doing the the hand gesture, and I was like, Catch Point lives, Drew. And it was literally like here to here distance. And, and he was just <laughs> no selling the whole thing, but I knew I could obviously <laughs> tell he heard it because I was a foot away. And then I saw it, like I saw the TV, and they like sh showed Swan's in, or TJ Perkins' entrance. I was like, no! They cut out my star turn. Yeah, yeah, that would have been. I would have loved to see that. Would have been hilarious. So I would have marked so hard for that. I know. Okay, let's get to predictions because this was. Not uh, all that go home show. So let's no. start with the main event, which I told you why is the main event because they said so. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> the universe oh, championship match. Kevin Owens versus champion Roman Reigns. And I have Kevin Owens. Who You're is? so convinced that it's Owens that yes, I I'm, feel like it, am it has so to be convinced. Owens. Right, I I guess like you can con like you convinced exactly. me. You convinced I, I me. So much more where you can go with it, and especially if like Finn's talking, say think positive, people. I'll be back. You know, like mm -hmm. I don't think he would be putting that out there if a doctor didn't tell him. Yeah, you're gonna be able to go by then. Yeah, you're you're right. coming back in the rumble. Right. I think Jericho teases interference, but he doesn't interfere. But somehow Kevin Owens still wins. Maybe like Roman's next challenger, whoever that may be, interferes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, like how the finish is going to happen, but I do see Kevin Owens walking out and then having his little, getting his stuff with Jericho out of the way because like, Kevin Owens should be legit pissed at Chris Jericho now because Jericho watched Roman Reigns set up for a spirit and, and then told yep. him to turn around to get spirit. Like, like the whole universal title story is about those two, but they're not going to have a title match. It would be kind of, you know, weird. So, mm -hmm. I mean, WWE does weird things, but not that weird, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. I have no, I have no interest in that match other than to see, like, Roman work a good match. I just, like, uh, whatever, you know? Because I'm going to tell you, I don't think K KO is going to let him. 
I don't think KO's gonna let him. Oh, he's gonna do his like chin lock gimmick? His chin lock for 10 minutes talking shit about Roman's hair. Like that, like the, like anybody gives a fuck. <laughs> like, I, what I wanna see is him throwing bombs. I don't wanna see not one goddamn headlock. Like, why does he, like every match, like in the tag team match, like I was losing my shit in the main event. Everybody was doing their shit and it was awesome. And then he gets in there. And then he throws on a fucking headlock on Xavier Woods, and I'm like, come the fuck on, man. Stop that sh Like, he doesn't make an intro. He just lays there and talks shit, which I'm sorry. Like, people are like, well, she, she doesn't like Kevin Owens. Fuck you. I love the dude, but he has been underwhelming since he won that title. And if you say otherwise, Get your head out of his ass because he has. <laughs> yeah. His his performance, fuck how they book him. His performance has been subpar with that belt. Maybe maybe they're actually telling it as a kayfabe story that, <laughs> that Trip's influence corrupts the champions and they get lazy and rest on their laurels. Wouldn't that be so good if WWE was like playing 3D chess with everyone? But they're not, so... It would it would be a great story to tell, but no, they're not. Which segue into <laughs> uh, <laughs> Robin versus Chris Jericho. Now, Chris Jericho is in the the process of turning face, mm -hmm. so feuding with supposed face Seth Rollins is kind of confusing, and it doesn't really help sell Seth. See, I can't, everybody's name with S I cannot pronounce tonight. It doesn't really help him. But, you know, he's going to be feuding with Triple H soon, and that's really not going to help him when he gets <laughs> over cheered at WrestleMania. Oh, my God. Like, if that doesn't happen, if Triple H does not get, like, the when time to play the game hits in Orlando <laughs> and the crowd is not <laughs> in Orlando. <laughs> I would be shocked oh, when they play that. Thank you, Florida, NXT fucking country. <laughs> God oh, damn. Yeah. I just hope they <laughs> chant NXT for the whole match. The whole match. He's going to get booed. I just think he's going to be like, you know what? The way he might get cheered is if they do like a really good like Shawn Michaels level type WrestleMania entrance for him. But why would they do that for him? Because everybody knows Triple H has to have an epic WrestleMania. So if you're facing Triple H, unless you're the Undertaker, mm -hmm. if you're facing Triple H, you're not going to get to get an epic entrance. You're just not. Because he gets it. Sting didn't even get it. He got like people drumming. Like I was Some like, drummers, this, has, yeah. this has fuck all to do with Sting. <laughs> yeah, that was confusing. Yeah, they're like, we gotta give him something, I guess. <laughs> uh, so who you got? Seth Rollins, Chris Jericho. I, um, Seth, I guess. It's got. It's got to be Seth. I and it, yeah, maybe. Seth. Maybe they'll do like an Owens tries to help and fails. And then somehow in the main event, Jericho like tries to fuck with Owens but ends up fucking with Reigns. I don't matter. I don't know. Like but I think Seth is winning for sure. Like although it would be hilarious it would be a wonderful cap off of Jericho's twenty sixteen to go over <laughs> Seth Rollins right now. If he goes over Seth Rollins, I'm telling you, I'm going to laugh. The loudest oh, for sure. For sure. Laugh ever because like this like this whole point guys and you cannot name one single young guy he's put over this entire year he's been here and he's been here the whole year <laughs> you cannot name one guy <laughs> uh, that would be a shame uh. <laughs> who yeah there's nobody okay uh well let's get to the real main event and the only it's a one match pay per view. It's a one match card, yeah. And that would be the Iron Man match between the WWE Raw Women's Champion Sasha Banks, not Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte Flair. 
Now I I'm I'm gonna keep hope alive. I'm gonna say Sa Sasha Weeks. <laughs> wow. Um. Well, I you know what I'm doing. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm I'm betting on Charlotte, big time. Uh, I think this this match actually I. I I'm going to be writing the preview for this match, so look out for that oh, on Sunday. Oh, wow. I know, right? Look out, look out. Um, this match is going to be awesome. And at the end of it, at the end of the show, we're going to be like, why didn't the Iron Man match main event? Like, literally, that will just be, like, even worse than TakeOver Brooklyn was when everyone walking out of the show was like, why didn't the women main event? That was way better. Like, this is going to be so hilariously obvious. Uh, Charlotte is going to win. I just hope it's not because of, like, Ric Flair shit. I hope he doesn't make any appearance at all. He's not needed. Just, you got you got Charlotte more heat with that promo and all that. Just let it be. Let it be. And that's what, that's yeah. what WWE has not been able to do with this entire program, which has worked to this point. Uh, but then when you have the heel go over in the like year long baby face chase that the crowd desperately, <laughs> desperately wants to cheer this baby face, like that's, if you want to hurt the women's wrestling project or whatever, have Charlotte go over and see people be like, oh, nothing, nothing matters. Charlotte's going to win, you know? Yeah. She won all the, well, all the pay-per-view matches. What? Oh, your daughter already my thinks daughter that. Already yeah. Thinks <laughs> yeah so it's gonna be like i think it's gonna be three falls to two what do you think? three two i think it's four yeah. three okay it's gonna be yeah i i don't know how in what order it's gonna be maybe it'll do like charlotte gets out to a big lead and sasha can't complete a comeback because of interference or something or i don't know it's gonna be a really good match that's again brought down by the booking of it and it's it's just like, man, guys, just once sit back, like remove yourself from the story you want to tell to the crowd and stop trying to get them to like that. And then listen to what the crowd is telling you and give them that in a way that works. You know, like it's not that hard yeah. to have the baby face go over in the feud. It's not that hard, but for some reason, they just can't do it. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to look at the odds when I, whenever I, I've been checking like daily to see if they've been put up yet. So they'll probably go up on like Friday, late Friday or Saturday. And once I put my money, I'm not going to look at the odds again. I'm not going to look at spoilers. So like when the result comes, I'm just going to be like, oh, just furious, <laughs> just angry, just so mad instead of like being dejected. Because I know if I look at the odds and see the smart money switch, I'll just be like, well. And then still watch it and be like, maybe they changed it. Maybe the odds are wrong. <laughs> maybe the odds are wrong. And then just have it play out in front of me. I'm like, yep, I should have seen that coming. Okay. But it's just, it's a bummer. I don't know. The whole yeah. thing's bumming me out. That's why I'm going for Sasha, because I'm, I'm, I'm still going to be optimistic. In, in spite of everything I've been told. Yeah. Because that's how I am sometimes. Uh, let's, let's move on real quick. And then we can get to the show that my bitch ass should leave alone. Uh, <laughs> uh, New Day versus C Cesaro and Sheamus. I'm going to go. I want New Day to retain, but I, I'm going to go with Cesaro and Sheamus. Yeah, I can see that being the case. I don't, I don't understand why they would make a tag title match now if they weren't taking the titles off. They could have just done had like a New Day celebration. Yeah, you know, they didn't have and to have a match. They could have totally done that. So I feel like, and just like like with Nikki did, like three days after she broke the whatever the Divas Championship record. Like, she lost it. I feel like there's like, all right, we got the record. And it's like, no, but your story is still being told. Like, just because yeah. you have reached this milestone doesn't mean you have to immediately end it. You know? Uh, it's not like in, a, in in shoot sports, when you get, like, one more hit than the all-time hit leader, you're just not just like, all right, I'm done. Yeah, I can retire That's now. Good. That's <laughs> My good. My career is over. Right? That's, it. That's all I needed to do. It's like, no, you keep playing and keep 
elevating your record so that it can't be broken in the future. Um, but yeah, I, I've really started to enjoy New Day again, which I know goes against the grain from a lot of people. I know they're getting on people's nerves, but just the fact that they're a babyface act on Raw that gets pushed and wins, like even if they cheat, they still win. So I'm cool with it, you know? <laughs> Like, I like seeing the faces win. But now that we're in, like, a face-face match, because even Sheamus is getting face pops now, you yes. know? So I don't know what's going on. It doesn't make any sense. It's all very frustrating. It's going to be a great match, probably. <laughs> if Cesaro has another hot tag like he had on Monday. Holy shit. Oh, they're going to show out. They're definitely, you know, oh, Cesaro. Sure. He's yeah. going to show out. It's gonna be great, um, but yeah, I think I think Sheamus and Cesaro are gonna win, but I don't, I don't, I don't think they should. I think they should win at the Rumble. Yeah. But okay, let's move on to the cruiserweight triple threat match between the Outlandish Rich Swan, Brian Kendrick, and some dude who. <laughs> Who I don't care about, TJ Perkins. <laughs> I hope Rich. I'm going for Rich Swan just I, because, yeah. of like, I think TJ Perkins is going to do something heelish, and they're going to turn him heel because mm -hmm. they recognize that nobody cares about him. So they're going to turn him, and I don't know what they do with Brian Kendrick. Hopefully, this stuff with Jackie Boy and Davari end soon, and then. We can have somebody who can actually talk and the crowd kind of cares about and Brian Kendrick feuding with Jackie Boy Ooh. so that he can get more. Yes, that's the feud of the Cruiserweights that I really want to see. Yeah. Because they, I believe they can get a, a crowd engaged in a match without any high spots. Like, you know, all the flippity doo -dah. I think they could actually have a great psychology-driven match and the crowd would love it. Mm-hmm. So yep. I totally agree with you there, and I and I also agree. I think Rich. I don't think there's any reason to take the title off Rich Swan. Oh, right. Um, yeah. Good. So yeah, Swan's gonna retain. I think the last match that they announced, because you know they could always throw something else on, oh, yeah. is uh, Rusev versus Big Cass. Well, there's also the Sammy Braun ten minute right, ten let's minute. Talk about that. Let's yeah. talk about that one first. Okay. Yeah. So, I think Braun is going to win. But in, I what, think in like Sammy's nine minutes and great. 50, nine minutes and 50 seconds or something. Yeah, something like really like Sammy's going to give him hell. Mm -hmm. Great in defeat, but I think Braun's still going to win. Which makes sense. It's a character building loss, which which is something that Sammy's character can really do with right now. Like they've just had him lose random matches, but like a a match in which he puts on a very spirited babyface performance to get the crowd really into it and like come close but come up short. Like that's man, why didn't they just do that? Why they could have done that with Bailey and Nia Jax. Like uh but um but yeah, I think I agree. I think Braun's gonna win. I think it's gonna be like close to the end, and then Sammy's gonna make one one bad move, one false move, and he, yeah. Braun's gonna take advantage of or, it. Or you know, take one risk too many. Yeah. you know something yeah. like something along. But yeah, that's that's sneak my second because I think the Iron Man's gonna steal the show, like the second match of the night. You know. Yeah, I, I that yeah I agree. That's a good shout. So let's let's just talk about Rusev versus Cass. Oh God. I suspect somehow Enzo is gonna cost Cass the match. Because I think this this is an angle to break up Enzo and Cass. Because I don't I don't think Cass is I mean Cass is like the guy they wanna push. And Enzo is like a character that they want to have do funny stuff with and get the crowd to pop. Mm. Enzo is a wrestler. And he can do 
that he can do his crazy Enzo sh thing without cast. I think it's a mistake, but that's where I see it going. Yeah, I think it's also a very big mistake. Um, I like cast teamed with Roman at Tribute to the Troops, and it didn't. He it felt like he didn't belong. Like he didn't. He barely was. He, Roman wrestled that entire match by himself, entire except match. for like basically. two minutes. Yeah, and it's it's like <laughs> Cass it, Cass is like a decent talker, but he's not like an otherworldly talker. Uh, like Enzo is, even though I really don't like Enzo um, anymore. But, and it's, yeah. he's not, he's a hot tag, and not even that great of a hot tag. Like, he's not no Jason Jordan throwing people everywhere hot tag, pulling straps down and stuff, right. you know. Um, and and his presence is like, I know he's seven foot tall, but his presence is smaller than that. Like, he's a huge dude, especially when I saw him yeah. in person. I was like, that dude is massive. Like, holy shit. But I don't know. It just, he comes across as smaller, smaller to, me, he to me at least. I agree. I absolutely agree. So that's the whole show. Those are our predictions. So let's get on to SmackDown, which uh, I had an incident, which I will not mention what happened because somebody who i dedicated this whole show to the name the title of this show is leave smackdown alone bitch because last week i titled the show smackdown sucks and i explained why that's not my opinion i love smackdown but apparently you know idiots exist and some idiot i mentioned my father on the show not even in a good light and they said my father sucks, so I'm not gonna speak on what happened yesterday. Maybe Miss SmackDown, but I did didn't see the show. But I know do know the results. So I want to talk about how your boy Dolph Ziggler always seems to fail upward <laughs> around this mug. Like, didn't he just lose to the Miz, and now he has a world? God. Like, no, no, why? Like, I, no. <clears throat> and then, like, he has a title shot in two weeks. What about Ellsworth's match? When is James Ellsworth going to get a title, his shot? Whenever AJ's ankle heals. <laughs> well, it has to be, like, is, well, what I'm saying is it's going to be next week or is it going to be after? Because if it's after then John Cena's going to be back that same show that that uh, AJ is defending against Dolph. And, like, I don't know. People might be excited to see Ellsworth and Cena interact, but Cena has a tendency to ether people. Mm -hmm. And, and I like, <laughs> Jimmy Two Hands might piss on himself <laughs> if John Cena Tina's ether him, and I, I don't want to see like a massacre on TV like that. Yeah, um, that's that is entirely fair. That's I mean AJ's ankle is not going to be healed for a match, a title match next week. So like they pull them off house shows. I don't even yeah. know. They might have to like delay that Ziggler match. Honestly, like from the way the report that report came out today is like. It might be like a couple of more weeks still, and and obviously on SmackDown he was very clearly avoiding any physical contact, um, right? Which you'll see when you watch like the opening segment. It's like a whole brawl thing, and AJ just like walks off. Like I great, I like I understand it was to set up the Fatal Four Way, but still he like lives just there. It's like all right, I'm walking off instead of like actually doing anything in physical. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good point with Cena back. I don't know how Ellsworth's title shot works into the mix there. I don't know. That's a good that's a good question. I don't and I don't have an answer for it. And, and then like injury like the last yeah. place anybody needs to be injured is SmackDown. Ross is already yeah. thin. And now Zack Ryder hurt his knee. 
just in in the battle royal where they were going to be determined the number one contenders. So like that's up in the air. Not not even just that, but literally he heard it on the move that won the battle royal. Christ. He it it was wow. a thing where like he did the Connor was carrying him and he did the grab the ropes and like Frankenstein or Connor over the ropes. And he like yeah. his leg came down and like hit the apron or like hit the side of the ring Damn. like real weird and it looks like he like pulled a muscle or tore something because he looked oh, he like was he in extreme yeah he was in extreme page and like he couldn't even like move he was just hanging like on the rope and just like this and then Mojo came out to celebrate <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because you see Zach from like he sees Mojo he's just like. Trying to stop Mojo. And Mojo was like, oh shit. He's like, all gets up in his face. He's like, no, fuck you. I'm hurt. Stop. <laughs> like, when I saw that, when I saw that on TV, I, when I was watching the replay, I was dying of laughter. I was like, that's hilarious. Because I, t- I saw the that whole is. thing. And Because he just puts his hand up. He's like, oh fuck. Mojo's going to fucking make this worse. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what they're going to do now with that. Because they aren't going to have a title shot because I mean, which is nice. It's nice that they'll have that in the future, like as a thing that SmackDown can pull out of its hat. But right now, like you don't want to, I don't want to put alpha in a program with the Wyatts right now because the Wyatts will get cheered and alpha will not get over. Like it's not, you know it's what? not into the world that the Wyatts would get cheered because first of all, the Wyatts are never getting booed with Randy Orton. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. They don't. What, what do they do heal? They don't really. They don't they like, do anything healish. Yeah. It's like if they started like, that's why I would suggest going. Well, I don't know. People like that shit. But like going on a rampage and just like beating up all the faces. Just like fucking up everything. Like, okay, this is what would get them uh, booed. It's in the ring. And they don't even have to touch her. But they just come out there and just scare the shit out of her. You know, do the little, the lights go off, the lights come back on, they surround her, and Bray, you know, gets dangerously, uncomfortably close to her, you know what I'm saying? And then the lights go back off, and they're gone, you know? Something, something, because they're heels, you know? <laughs> like, they're supposed to be getting booed. Yeah, and then they're, they're very much not getting booed. Um, like the, like at uh, tribute to the troops, like the lo- very loud RKO chant. And I was just like, the whole time I was like standing there, I was like, this is not good. <laughs> I was literally just like <laughs> commenting out loud to myself. I was like, this is a bad sign for the future of this tag division. Yeah. Like, I, I know you want the team to be over, but you also are trying to make alpha stars and like, it just keeps she keeps getting in the way, <laughs> you know. I don't know. That's that's the women, because I actually did. Because I had I. That's the only clip I took time to watch today was Alexa Bliss. <laughs> I found it on the internet when she, your girl, uh, Diana, right? Diana, yeah. She was there, and she got called James Ellsworth. I did. I thought her body language. Like, I was kind of excited to see what she would do in the squash, but, you know, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they're using her on TV is promising. And and saying saying her name multiple times. So that's good. So do you think she might, like, skip NXT? No, that's, I mean, she's still very, she's still 22. Like, she's not going to skip NXT, but she, she has a very, very bright future ahead of her. Uh, I watched a match with her and Kimberly, I think, uh, that she has pinned to her Twitter account. It's like an 18-minute match. And all I'd seen from her really in her yeah. ring work is like her getting squashed by Asuka pretty much in NXT or getting squashed by Nia Jax in NXT. But she's working like a technical 18-minute match. And I was like, holy shit. I was blown away. Um, so, yeah, I'm... Tuesday, yesterday, when I saw, like, I saw Alexa 
like it was like the Tron was like up next, like Alexa Bliss is walking in the ring. I was like, oh shit, like Alexa Bliss is you know, got a match. I heard that and I was like, oh, she's got a squash match because Alexa's great in squashes, like just wonderfully vicious in squashes. So I was super excited about that. And then she got on the, like got on the mic and I still had not seen Deanna the whole time. And then I like looked to the ring and when she got on the mic and I was like, oh, and I just started, yo, Deanna, Deanna. <laughs> I just losing my shit. Everyone around me, everyone around me was like, who the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody had any idea what was going on, all except me, like losing my shit, which was hilarious. Which made me laugh even harder. Like I was just enjoying it at that point for the absurdity. Um, but yeah, I thought her like, "Are you serious?" Like when she called when Alexa when Lexi called her Jane Jane Ellsworth was pretty good. So I was I was hyped to see the squash, and then we got the championship match instead, and I knew it wasn't gonna be like. A clean finish or anything but i was hyped as shit to see that um and i'll send you the picture there's when you when you watch becky's promo like when she's in the entryway like entryway i'm literally just a foot in the background just sit standing there and i'm just like oh, this is hilarious yeah you're gonna have to check that out like that might i haven't looked at the youtube clips it might be on the youtube clip uh, because it's literally, I'm just on my phone taking pictures the whole time. It's so funny. I'm so, let me just tell you, Andrew, I'm so jealous. Cause like yeah. I always, I'm in Mississippi and they never, they never film here. Yeah. And like, I'm, it pisses me off because like Mississippi, they would actually like fans would call us like Mark Veal yeah. because we cheer the faces we boo the heels that is what we do down here and like we are so loud and just like the f and i think that the cr like the crowd appreciates it i know seth rollins does that's why i can't that's why like everybody turns on him i can't because he loves he tweets about performing in my home state so screw you guys um and he like he breaks out band moves and shit so like you're like on TV and close to the rest. It's like okay. The only thing that I got was like I had third row seats, and there was a lot of women mm -hmm. in my section. And so when Roman came out, you know, he hears us. He looks over in action during his entrance and does a little wave to us, and we all lost our shit. <laughs> I can't imagine being a foot away from Becky Lynch and just be like keeping my cool, like, yeah, this is normal. She's, yeah, this is yeah. cool. This is cool. <laughs> this is cool. I would be losing my shit. Like, she's right here. I can, I can. Sure if I, I wouldn't, because don't touch the performers and that's don't, yeah, don't touch but, the performers. Especially don't touch but, the women. Especially don't touch the women. Especially that. But it's, yeah, uh, I'm it so, was, I'm so uh, jealous. Yeah, the whole thing was, it was great because there was like a little, there was a 10 year old kid on like, I don't know if it was his actual birthday, but it was like his birthday present and his mom brought yeah. him and he marked out the entire show. And it I was, saw. yeah, he saw, the, he saw the little kid in the red shirt. Yeah, I, I think it was like, a, yeah, he uh -huh. was losing his mind from like the very, the dark match at the very beginning was Neville. Uh, versus Kurt Hawkins and the whole match he was just he lost his shit for Neville and Neville like high-fived him on the way in and the way out so that was really cool because then he like ran up to his mom and was like this is so cool and I was just like man this is awesome I was like that kid made me enjoy the, sh the entire experience just a little bit more because just to see how hyped he was and like I was just like, this is so genuine and enthusiastic and you can't not respond to that like in some way. And then like I realized his reaction to like everyone was going to be my reaction to Sasha. <laughs> he didn't show up. So I was just like, oh, come on. I would have lost yeah. my shit. And also uh, when Bailey came out, she like was high-fiving high people on my side and then switched like three people before me. And I was like, no. I saw that. I was, I was so like, bummed. Damn. I was so bummed. Was so I was close. like, come on, Bales. Close. I was so close. 
I was waiting yeah. for a moment where it'd be like, oh shit, <laughs> this is, I'm, I feel awkward now. Now, like I was on the third row. So after the match, the main event with uh, Roman, like mm -hmm. I know he's coming around to touch people's hands. Yep. So like I'm trying to get up to the front and then there's, there's like a, cause I'm, I'm happy to be sitting in the section with all the women. There's like, I love my kids, but I kind of did kind of leave them. And I had my four-year-old on my hip, so I'm just running, <laughs> trying to get to there. And I, <coughs> I stick my hand out, and he touched my hand, and I fucking lost it. Lost it. Yeah, that was that was me, like, uh, like when Bailey came out, and when, like, Jack Gallagher came out. I was like, because there was actually nobody, like, sitting in those, like, in two seats for some reason. Those people didn't show up, even though those are, like, the best seats. So, like, the kid was sitting behind me, but, like, he moved up to there. And I wasn't going to, like, kick him out and be like, I want to be on the end. Because, you know, I did, right. it's not, it's, this, these two yeah. kids can do their thing. But, like, when, like, when Bailey came out and, and Gallagher came out and shit, I, like, was like, okay, I'm moving over to the – I'm getting on the barricade now. All right, kids, I bet let you had your fun. Now it's my time to mark out. So I was like it was, – it was, it was a hoot. It was a lot of fun just seeing, like, the biz came down, like, three times throughout the night. And, like, every mm -hmm. time I just lost my shit for the Miz. I was like, yeah, Mike. I was like, let's go, Mike. I was, like, dying the whole time. <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, somebody in the Daily said that they saw me marking out for the Miz. And I was like, oh, boy. That's, that's going to be embarrassing when I see that. Because I was, like, losing my shit. Everyone else is booing him. And I was like, you're the best, man. I love you. That was great. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, the whole experience, like, just seeing little kids – get so hyped like that it's just so good to see and it reminds you for a second like god we get so snarky and cynical about mm -hmm. this shit with with reason too you know but like just seeing that real genuine enthusiasm is is like a salve on the heart you know, a little bit a lot of the kids don't first of all they don't realize that it's predetermined mm -hmm. So they're really invested in who wins and loses. And also, they don't know about shit that we spend and hours it, yeah. hours a week discussing. They don't know about any of that shit. So, like, if you took that away from us, if we didn't know about any of this shit, I guarantee we would enjoy the product more. But, mm -hmm. I mean, hey, you can't unring that bell. We right. do know. Yeah. Like, there's an industry... <clears throat> There's an industry solely dedicated to telling you the shit that you're not supposed to know about wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's not uh, going away. It's not <laughs> going away. No, but I, I do. I do wish at some points, like, because I can, I can feel it at some points where, like, knowing too much detracts from my enthusiasm. Not saying, like, I know everything. I'm, like, an insider. Not, not by any means. But, like, just having – a level of knowledge that's there, it it detracts. Mm -hmm. It totally detracts from the product, which is why, like, going to a live show, and it, I feel like a house show would really be like this because it's, like, outside of kayfabe, mm -hmm. um, where you can just, like, experience it, like, as a sensory, visceral experience. You know, like, that's... that's It makes such a difference watching on TV and being there live. Like, it's... Like, I didn't, the show yesterday wasn't honestly that great. Like, I would have given it, like, a B, maybe B minus. Um, I haven't watched Talking Smack. Apparently, it's very good again. But probably, like, a B minus B because there was, there was stuff that – there was no, like, segment that killed me. Like, I loved the, the whole women's segment. That was good. And the main event was awesome. I really liked that. Um, but there wasn't anything that made me go, holy shit, this is, like – an A show, but just the fact that I was there and got to experience right. it, it was just like, it was just like, I'm had that, I know, right? Like, I was just having, like, the time of my life, even when, like, Charlotte looked me dead in the eye and was like, y'all are disrespecting Bailey, and I was like, I know they you are. Know what? Like, I'm trying to start a Let's Go Bailey chant, shit. Once again, I'm so jealous. So because... jealous of me, I had to say that, I know, the right? Queen, the queen looks you in, you, I probably would have melted it into a puddle. Charlotte looks me in the eye. Dead in the <laughs> eye. Dead in like, the eye. I would have been like, 
marry me. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was just like, I was the whole time. I, because the, the We Want Sasha chant started, and I was just like, I'm, I'm like so torn right now. Because I'm like, I so badly want Sasha to come out uh, and like save Bailey from a beatdown or whatever, which I'm surprised we didn't even get that. But, but then like the crowd started, and I was like, no, 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 don't, don't do this. And that's when Charlotte turned around. So I was like despondent. I was just like, God damn it. And like I looked up, and she's looking right at me, and I'm like, I'm not chanting. <laughs> like, don't look at me. What the fuck? Right, I'm not I'm the person it. who's been yeah, trying I'm to start for Bailey. Right? It was <laughs> right? it all of them fuckers. I'm trying to chant for Bailey, and no one's getting involved. So don't blame me, Charlotte. I, she was really good. She was really good with the banter with the crowd, though. Because they also started, like, a daddy issues chant. Which, first of all, I didn't even understand at first. Because I totally forgot about, like, the Rick thing. Um yeah. But I was, and then I was like, "This is a weird chant. I don't think you should chant daddy issues at somebody." That's that's that made me a little no. feel weird. And I was like, uh, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. That but, yeah. just makes me relate to Charlotte more. <laughs> right? Exactly. That just made her sympathetic. I was like, "God damn it! That's not what I want right now. I'm not supposed to be growing an appreciation for Charlotte. Shit! I'm supposed to hate her guts when she wins on Sunday." Okay. Think about the uh, Nikki Bella. I didn't. I didn't Ooh. watch that one, but the Nikki Bella and Natalia Carmella thing. I heard. I heard it was. Was it weird? Because I was hearing that it kind of played off weird. What did you I, think about? I don't think it was. I don't think it was weird either live or when I watched it back on TV. Because on when I was live, I couldn't really tell. Like I could tell that Natty was like talking to Nikki, like, at the end when she was, like, up against the rope right before, like, the small – Carmella got her with the small package to win. But, like, I couldn't tell, like, throughout the whole match that she was, like, talking to Nikki and be like, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Like, I couldn't he- – like, I didn't hear that uh, or I blocked it out. I don't know. That's possible. Um, mm-hmm. But I but I missed that whole thing. So, like – but I didn't think it was weird when I watched it on TV. I was like, it makes sense. Like, she's dominating this match, you know, so – and she's trying to get her point across. So I thought I thought the segment worked well for like the angle they're building. In all honesty, um, and I was I was cheering. I was the only person cheering for Carmella. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. Literally the only one. <laughs> she's, she's because her character is a terrible person. <laughs> her character is a terrible person, but also You're like. Not supposed to cheer for her. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. But I was like in this weird, shoot, sympathetic phase. Like I felt bad because like. She, first of all, she needs a new theme. The theme doesn't work for her crazy ass like mafiosa character. You know, no. she, that needs to be updated. I feel, and I feel like because that theme really hurts because it's it hits the opening notes and then gets quiet for a bit, and you can hear the crowd just have no reaction. Versus, like if you have just loud music, yeah. you can get away with it, but it looks it like, comes know, across even- right. It comes across really bad um, yeah. when it's just, like, dead quiet. And I, I feel like Alexa kind of has the same problem in that her – the hook for her music is not very good. Like, the actual theme is all right, but, like, that da 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 that's not very good. I think that should, they should, like, do something with that. But I don't like anything about Alexa Bliss's music. So mm. what I think they should do is go find little Kim and be like – you know when you did it's time to rock and roll. Don't do anything similar. Just make another kick ass song because we have somebody <laughs> that needs some music. Yeah. I don't know, but she needs something that's like, oh shit, you know it's Alexa Bliss coming out. And that's She's about to whoop some ass, yeah. That could have Alexa Bliss's music. Any fucking yeah. any any man or woman. <laughs> it, it, I don't like it at all. Yeah, it's it's not I great. This, the music that she had with uh, those two guys. Oh, Blake and Murphy. Yeah, the I'd, like. I'd rather she have that music. I would. Yeah, that's actually that actually would be a better better theme. Like, just because it's more engaging, you know. Yeah. 
it's a much more engaging theme. But yeah, yeah getting back to uh, Natty and Carmela and Nikki, I I like where they're going with that story. And yeah, I've I've marked out big time when Nikki's music hit, and I was I was singing her theme. This is actually funny. I was singing her theme. I was like, "You can look, but you can't touch." And like the kid, the little kid next to me like sang the next line, and I was like, "Oh man, this is a this is a this is a hoop." And I he did, that, he did that for like a bunch. Like I was singing AJ's theme, and actually I was singing AJ's theme, and this uh, guy behind me, like this older dude, like 30, 35 year old dude, started like we were like, "Yeah," like we started singing it together. You don't want no. Like I was just like, "Oh man, this is a this is a blast." WWE shows this live are so fun, so fun. They are fun. And speaking of, because let's, let's move into the hot topic section. Oh, boy. Because I have a few things I want to address. Uh, Tuesday morning, uh, there was a rumor, and I'm paraphrasing, that uh, Roblox trouble selling tickets, and they're offering two-for-one deals. I, and... The part of the rumor that everybody, damn near everybody in the thread ignored was that their deal to the one for TLC. So so don't tell me there's not a SmackDown bias when you have a rumor like that. And then I see several, like most of the comments about that rumor is, oh, well, no wonder Roman Reigns sucks and this and that. And that. I was like, okay, so explain SmackDown. Well, there is there is one extenuating circumstance that there are a shit ton of shows in Texas over like the next it's month and a half. Many shows. There's too many. They first of all they yeah. run too many shows. They run too many house shows. They run too many pay per views, and their Monday yeah. program is an hour too long. Like they need to cut back, but their margins aren't big enough because they're not having enough success. To the fact that they can right. cut back and give their talent like more time to breathe and, and storylines more time to breathe rather than just rushing through stuff. But I, it's just, and I, I posted something and thank God it went green because I didn't think it was, where it's just like WWE is a cold product. Yeah. Like people accept that. Like this is the reason why I don't get into these arguments about ratings or who's a draw. None of them are. Seriously. A draw brings in new fans. Like, wrestling is a cold product. If when The Rock shows up and he can only pull in 4 million viewers, wrestling is cold. And it's, it's not just a Raw problem. It's, the, it's a WWE problem. Because as long as Raw is seen as is sucking, yeah. SmackDown, they're trading the same viewers. That's all they're doing. They're not bringing in. A draw brings in new eyes. And those eyes that they bring in, they sustain it and they grow it. Like people weren't calling Steve Austin a draw because a hundred thousand more people watched. No, millions more people were watching when he was at the top than when he wasn't. So, like, until ratings start bursting out and house sale shows start going through the roof, not oh well, when this guy's on top, the house sales aren't as fucked up as when this guy is on top. No, it's a 1% margin. He's making a little bit more. I'm not gonna call him a draw. He's just he's just not as weak of a draw as this guy. Mm -hmm. But they're all weak draws. Every single last one of them, even AJ Styles, is all, they're all weak draws. That's my take on it. That's how I feel. I'm not gonna feel that way until they start bursting out and how shows start going up and I see a sustained pattern where the needle constantly moves up and up and up. That might be a while. That's all right. <laughs> it is going to be a while. So I, and that's why I wish people would stop talking about draws because there aren't any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wait, till, wait till WWE actually finds one. My honest to God opinion is that these guys are like, you're like, oh, well, this is, and it hasn't. In over a year, Raw has kind of sustained the bad ratings. They're kind of been in the same place. 
And these guys are just keeping those people there. So thank God that whatever they're doing, they're keeping that core two and a half million there. Yeah. You know, I just, I just pray, like, if it drops below two million, I'm going to be so sad. It's not going to be a victory. It's not going to be funny. It's not going to be nothing to banter about. Like, these guys are physically hurting themselves to entertain me, and I want them to make as much money as they can. Yeah. I don't give, like, that's why I don't give a fuck who's the draw. If Ellsworth was bringing in a million, put the title on him, run with him. If Goldberg, Goldberg. He, you can only get a little bit over three million with Goldberg. That's how you know wrestling is cold. These old guys aren't shooting the shooting ratings all the way through the roof. He's just like, eh, it's a little bit better. Maybe a four hundred thousand more people tuned in. But then they, when they find out that that's all they're gonna do, they tune out. Yeah, they're not coming back. Because they watched the show and the only person they made look good was the person that you tuned in to see. Like, I don't know what they're going to do. I seriously don't. Well, they should main event with the hot angle that people are interested in is what they should do. And then they should push push that baby face that people are interested in cheering. I absolutely agree. If, if they made the women stronger and made the men more of a supporting act and run with that, because those are the, Sasha and Charlotte, I will give them this. When they are put in those positions, it is a sustained audience and it's more than without them. Mm-hmm. So, so go with them. Make them the most important part of the show. And also make, Build something around them to have a foundation. Like, Raw's a three hour show. Why the fuck are you wasting time with Titus O'Neill and yeah. Mark Henry? Yeah, that was funny. That was funny as hell. But nobody really gives a fuck. And nobody even is going to remember that. So, you know, that's why it's frustrating. Like, Vince doesn't want to get out of his own way. He doesn't want to admit yep. that people would rather see women wrestle now. But they, they would. According to his ratings, they would they care more about the women's championship. The Raw Women's Championship is is more important than any title. And I'm talking about all the titles in the company, Raw and SmackDown. It's the most important title. It's to me, it feels like the most important title. I'm sorry, AJ Styles is feuding with the little turtle without a shell. Not going to tell me that the title he's holding when this dude's giving him the business. That title's more important than these two women scratching and clawing and damn near killing each other over it for over a year almost? No. You're not going to tell me that. If, I think if they leaned into being actually progressive instead of saying they are, maybe that'll make a dent, but I don't know. Yeah, I actually think that, actually think that could like heat up wrestling again and draw in people who... like are not just lapsed, but someone who might hear like, oh shit, yeah, women's wrestling is like the big thing now. And like, you might get some crossover from people who wouldn't generally, you know, give wrestling a chance. They'd be like, wait, women's wrestling is the main event? They're like main eventing all these shows and they're like fucking awesome? Like, I want to check that out. That's why I got back into wrestling, you know? Like, that's what brought me back. Uh, And that's why I'm still here, pretty much. Um, But... Yeah, they they just like you said, they can't get out of their own way. Like they're, it's like they're so close to building trust with viewers, and then they just don't follow through. They just don't follow through on it, and it's just every time they do it, it drives it not just drives more people away, but drives people away for like if not permanently for a very long period of time. Because it's like, you can only, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me 8,000 times, I don't ever want to watch your <laughs> show ever again. You know, like, it's just, it's just disheartening. It's disheartening, and that's not generally how you want people to respond to your television product. Um, so, yeah, they need to do something new, and they haven't, I, they just, they haven't leaned in all the way to things they could do. Um, mm-hmm. which is, it's frustrating. it's frustrating. 
it is. It's very frustrating. And I, somebody, need, like, I, I feel like, and I don't want to turn this into an all hell session, but I, right. I feel like Triple H gets it. I feel like he does because, especially with those two women, because he's seen them through their whole career. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's always nurtured their, like, their career. And he's helped, uh, <clears throat> Uh, and he didn't have to do anything other than give them the spot. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, you didn't have to do anything for Austin or The Rock, but just give them the spot. And I kind of do feel like those two could be stars that could start bringing in the future. Because, like, looking from NXT, Raw, SmackDown, as far as guys, I don't see the guy. But when I look at the roster for the women, I see a couple of options, at least three, possibly four, who could be the guy. Yeah. Saying that, you know, it's always got to be the guy. It can't be the girl or the woman, you know? So. Yeah, no, I, um, I have... A piece maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday, coming out about the Charlotte Sasha feud, and um, the and then it, within the, like the last thirty six hours, it, it was kind of like glowing, and it still kind of is. But like now, I've added a little bit more pushback on the fact that they're definitely not going to main event Roadblock, and when they very clearly should, like in a Iron Man match for like in your hottest feud is not the main event. Like that's, there's literally no reason not for them to, for them to not be in the main event other than the fact that they're women. There's literally no reason. Well, I'll say this. The Iron Man match with a sec, with like the U.S. title, or if he was SmackDown and the Intercontinental Championship was having an Iron Man match, I, I don't think that would be the main event either. Even though if it were the highest angle that it should be. I think possibly, because, you know, Lord, I'm giving WWE the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. Possibly they just view it as a secondary title. Which they need to get and, past. Yeah, it's it's a world title, yeah, and they the universe, need to acknowledge yeah, that. The universal title is a secondary title. Right, right. Like, nobody cares about that. Like, the... The, the bell on his debut was so poorly received. That's all the crowd could possibly, like, this bell is stupid. Delete, delete. delete. <laughs> this is my favorite. That was my favorite chant. Delete, delete, delete. delete, delete, delete. delete. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Uh, yeah, the, the whole, the chants. I don't know why Seth was complaining, because the chants for that match, like, took away from the fact that the match was bad. <laughs> You know, like he should have been like, thank God you totally like covered up that awful triangle choke spot that was just horrible. Yeah, I hadn't, if I hadn't saw that gif of it, I would have never knew that spot happened. Right? And then you <laughs> saw it and you're like, wow, that, that what the hell? Like that is awful. What? How come nobody focused on that botch for weeks and weeks? Because hmm. Ben Baylor doesn't know how to take a buckle bomb mm-hmm. on... Uh, on a barricade. On a barricade, yeah. yeah. That's why. Oh, boy. Yeah. So WWE that is, it. is is it's in this weird place where it like it gives us a lot of stuff that we're into and like is so close to so close to like getting back into like not like winning people back immediately, but starting to get into a healthier spot and they like you said, they just can't get out of their own way. It's sad. I do want to talk about the tweet that Biggie did because I'm irritated. Oh, I, yeah. I was yeah. I was hoping you'd bring that for up. Those, for those of you who do not know, oh, oh come on now. You knew I was going to bring it up. Oh, yeah. Not aware. Biggie uh, tweeted a picture on his uh, Twitter. Was that yesterday? Uh, yeah, it was, it was during the it was during Tribute to the Troops. <laughs> Tribute to the Troops, yeah of the new day with Rich Swan and Sasha Banks and said hashtag black excellence. 
Which I, I had to stop and think, and I was like, wait a minute, Kevin Owens is the only white champion on Raw. Wait the goddamn minute. Holy shit. He is. That's crazy. And if he loses, there will be, if he loses, there will be no black, I mean, white champions on Raw. Well, all well hold on. Hold on. Charlotte will be champion. <laughs> I'm going with Sasha winning. Come on now. <laughs> Sorry. Andrew. Sorry. But I'm saying if in my scenario if my scenario goes, there will be no white champions on Raw. But I was like, and then I was thinking, all the champions on SmackDown are white. And Raw's the heel show. And SmackDown's the face show. See, these are the things that some of us black people look at and be like, okay, what, what's up with that? But uh, that's neither here nor there. I wanted to address what, who, how could you possibly have a problem with that tweet yeah. if you're not an idiot? Like, people are like, what about Naomi? Naomi is not a champion. Well, what? How, how come Kevin Owens wasn't in the picture? Because he's not black. <laughs> Hashtag black excellence. Like seriously, we can't we can't never have anything, Andrew. I'm telling you, I'm sorry. This is this is how it feels when your skin color is your scarlet letter. You can never have anything because as soon as you start to enjoy some, here come motherfuckers complaining. That was a nice fucking tweet. Yeah. It was. I saw it and I was like, oh, look at that. But he, here we go. Motherfucking Trump supporters and shit got to come out at the woodwork. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to get that joke. Oh, yeah. No, I know. I know. <laughs> For sure. Trying to make the WWE great again. <laughs> yeah. And they it- had a problem with black excellence. Listen, being black and achieving a goal where you have to compete with people outside of your race, you automatically, this is what you learn. It is, I, I, don't, I don't live in any other country but America. But I suspect this goes on around the world. If you want to be successful in competing against other races, you have to be twice as smart, um, twice as fast, twice as good as the next non-black person. So when you reach something and you get there, yes, that's why so many people celebrate in football when they make a touchdown. They work damn hard to get that goddamn touchdown. Hell yeah, they're gonna celebrate. Like, like, fuck, let them have something. They just broke a fucking record. They sitting around with their crew. They're like, they probably just realized, oh, wait a minute, we all champions and we black. Isn't that cool? Apparently, it's not cool. Apparently, all lives matter. Oh, you have to make sure you say all. That, to me, if you have a problem with that, that's just like you have a problem with Black Lives Matter. Yeah. I take it there, because this is not called Wednesday night, let's be politically correct. This is called <laughs> Wednesday night shooting. If you have a problem with that tweet, I have a problem with you. At me. <laughs> Find out what my Twitter is and tweet my ass. <laughs> and and we will have a lovely discussion. It'd be lovely on my part, not sure. Yeah. I, say about. I I saw the tweet like when I was at the show and I was like, oh, that's really cool. And like I didn't see the backlash to it until uh was it this morning or like very or like late last night after I got home. And I was just like super confused. I was like, wait, why would anyone ever be and like the whole people like people are like oh what if but if it was a bunch of white champions doing that you would have been like oh it's and it's just like people who say that are in such stuck in their own world that they Hold on, let me let me stop you right, right. there because yeah, yeah. i think people do not my point when your skin color is your scarlet letter you are going to celebrate when when you are doing well okay and it is yes it is a whole different thing to say white excellence because white excellence excludes other races black excellence does not 
I'm sorry, it doesn't. You can go ahead, continue. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty much it. It's ignoring like all historical context of like what white and what being black means in not just this country but around the world, pretty much. But uh, but definitely in America for and also for for, fucking oh, yeah. oh yeah, and definitely also in the WWE, which has very poor, you know, like the New Day's original gimmick was like choir boys in you know in a gospel choir doing shit like the most stereotypical gimmick that you could get in 2014 when they came out or whatever you know so it's so seeing that tweet i was like that's awesome i was really hyped to see it and then i guess i should have like saw it coming because i mean how many million people just voted for donald trump but you know it was a whole bummer. That's like if somehow there was a joint show and the Usos were champion and Nia Jax was champion and Roman Reigns was champion and they tweeted a picture that says Samoan excellence. But there would be nothing wrong with that either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, white people. Yes, I know. You're, see, this is the thing. And this, this is the thing. You, you will say, well, black people have it hard. I have it hard. But historically, your people have not. Everybody has it hard. It's a hard fuck. To, like going through life is hard in general. Yeah. But let me repeat this because I love it. When I thought of, when I thought of it, I was like, yes. This is something. When your skin color is your scarlet letter and you can't take that motherfucker off, it's a whole different meaning. Just like, I, Andrew, I will never understand how it feels to be you. I wouldn't even dare to dream of it. So please do not try to think you have any iota idea of what it is to, for a large majority of people, just because you have, there is something wrong with you. You are a second class citizen. You don't deserve the same rights as other people. You don't know how that feels if you don't live it. That's all. Yep. You're that's, totally that's right. Just, also, like, also, also dumb shit about that. Like, then it, there was a, like a sub thread of idiocy there that was like, Sasha Banks isn't black. I was just like, oh, fuck. Are we doing this again? Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, she Yes, she is. Yes, she is. She's black. She's also white. Yeah, she's, she's black. She's mixed race, but in America, if you're a little bit black, black. you're black. You're black. Yeah. Just That's like how Roman Reigns doesn't go it. around calling himself Italian, but he's half Italian, but no, he's Samoan. Mm hmm. Because people see the big nose, they see his greasy hair, they see his darker skin, and they know he's touched with something. I don't know. That kind of sounds Italian, actually. It does. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was that not? I felt like that was, I thought that was on point, but I guess maybe not. <laughs> Well, when he was bigger, he did. He was he was when he was actual Samoan size. Oh yeah. Because like people have asked, actually asked me, was Roman Reigns black? I was like, no. He no. My son asked me that one time. He said, "Is Roman Reigns black?" I said, "He's." I, I, I laugh now. I said, "He he's something like black. He 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 like he like ha a half a step away." Because <laughs> <laughs> the Samoans, they might they they close close. You know, it's a lot of races out there that's close. Mm -hmm. They like they can join the family. You can be over here with us. We we accept. That's the thing about black people. Black culture is everywhere. Like, I was watching tribute to the troops, and there are white guys in the military. Like, I want to give a shout out to. What the fuck do you think that vernacular came from? We, oh, we're gonna get crunk. What the fuck you? Sasha's ratchet. Where the fuck you think that came from? First of all, and this used to piss me off. Why the fuck do you think Full Sail was calling her ratchet? Oh yeah, I. You know how I feel about that. Cause she's black. Yeah. 
the only reason they were calling her ratchet if a white woman with that exact same gimmick she wouldn't have not had got one single who whatever her name is if sasha banks was pure d white and had that gimmick she would have never got sasha's ratchet chance mm -hmm. ever so let's start with the bullshit. let's like people are like well donald trump is honest he's speaking now I, I agree the, some people on the other side, they tiptoe around shit too goddamn much. Cause if somebody's racist, say they fucking racist. Don't say, well, it was inappropriate and people still... No, motherfucker said racist, harmful shit. Call them the fuck out on it. Stop being... Like, if anything, this shit should wake people up. Like, yeah, you want to be nice and respectful to everything, but if the person that opposes you it's not pulling any punches. You look like a fucking idiot being nice. Fuck that shit. It's time to stop being nice about demanding respect for equality and fair treatment. It is. And that's for different races, religions, women, gays, transgenders, all of that. Stop fucking being nice and respectful about that shit. Motherfucker don't want or transgenders in uh, uh, certain bathrooms. Fuck that. Call them motherfuckers out for what they are. Don't be like, oh, well, you know, we just want, please give us our right. No. Malcolm X that shit. Call them the fuck out. I was way more into Malcolm X than Martin. Yeah. <laughs> way more. Yeah, that, that's just, it's, it's idiotic. And it turns my stomach sometimes the stuff with the Rusev because it's like he will get booed just because like Jenzel Washington, who's a daily regular, he made a comment that was like Rusev is commentary that no matter how right and just you are, yeah. you have a foreign accent, Americans will boo you and think you're wrong. And we just stop that shit too. That's why I'm so behind Cesaro and Sheamus because like the foreigners their face, their gimmick is not about being foreigners. Like, don't anybody let Vince, like somebody forgot they're not American. So let's not, <laughs> yeah, let me not, I'm never gonna bring that up again. They right. are American, what am I talking about? They're yeah. both Detroit <laughs> and one's from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seamus really is some punker from like Lincoln Park and uh, <laughs> Cesaro is, I don't know, some dude from Portland or something. Hey, we got to stop. We got to stop this bullshit. It's way too serious shit to be going on and on about a goddamn tweet. Yeah. Get yeah. over yourselves. Um, yeah. Is there any, any topic you want to talk about that we haven't discussed? Um, let's see. Let me let me look up my notes. There, it's hilarious how like my random notes. There's just like a bullet point list, and then there's one thing that's separated from everything else, and this is exactly what it reads. I have so much fucking respect for Mercedes. That's all it says. <laughs> That's literally all it says. I don't even know why I wrote that down. That's literally all it says in relation to that, which is hilarious. Um, I think the one thing I wanted to say also about being at a live show is, like we touched on it with Big Cass, is people who stand out, um, people who like really come across as having a presence. And I f it was weird because... There were a number of people who came across like that. You know who really came across? Like, Roman definitely came across as having a presence. Which oh, was, I know. Which, I experienced it. Yeah. <laughs> so. And, 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 and this has got nothing to do with, like, booking or where they are in, in the company or anything like that. But, like, just people who carry themselves larger than life, uh, which is, like, the best thing you can do as a wrestler, like, because that's what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be a larger-than-life character. And, like... Like, I understand why, here's going to be, this might be a bit of a take. I understand why they put the championship on Alexa. Because she comes across larger in life in a way that Becky doesn't. 
And I love Becky. Becky's great. And she's a wonderful talker and wonderful wrestler. But you see Alexa and she just like radiates like presence. Yeah. And like you, it, it, com- those people command your attention in a way that you just have to be there, you know, and have to see. Um, and like that really stood out to me. That was something like, and cause when Alexa was talking to Shane, when Shane came out and then made the match, I was also there like two feet away from that. Unfortunately, the camera was not on me for that. Cause I was making faces the whole time, like in reaction to what Shane was saying. Uh, I was totally like hamming it up and then I saw that it wasn't on camera and I got really bummed. Um, but like, I saw that from like a, f- you know, a foot away and Becky cut her promo from like a foot away and like Alexa just had so much more to her. And I, that might be kind of harsh and it's in no way a detraction from Becky, who I think is an exceptional performer, but it's just something to keep in mind. I don't know. That's interesting. That is very interesting. You know who else has a very strong presence and I understand why like he's been their guy forever? John Cena. Like oh, he, oh yes. When, he is, For when sure. he's in the building, you know a star is in the fucking building. You really know a star is in the building. Like, I watched him on Saturday Night Live, and let me tell you, it just sucked. Yeah, I watched, right. I watched, like, the first 30, 40 minutes, and I was like, well, this they're not giving him anything to work with here. They, they gave him shit. It was yeah. not a well-written show. It's like, they barely even tried. Yeah. He was great in what they gave him. Like, he, he didn't fuck up. Like... He, you like he was better at reading the cue cards than some of the people that are on the show every week. So yeah, yeah, yeah. C- Cena's definitely one. The other people who really stood out to me were Styles. Definitely stood out in a big way. He's got a great swagger, and I don't know if this has always been the case or if it's just because he's like red hot right now. But the Miz came across like the most important fucker in the building. <laughs> I swear to God. And like, that's not just cause like I'm a huge mark for the guy right now. Like the red carpet that they roll out and stuff. And like Maurice being there has made, has elevated him so much. Uh, like it, it was just like, Holy shit. This guy, he's something. And like, and it, it, it was, the first that I've ever, like, I was like, oh, yeah, the Miz is a star, whatever. But, like, the first that I really felt like this guy could be in the main event and, like, legitimately be so. That's that's interesting. That is. Yeah. That's good to hear, actually. But, yeah. It, it, you have to have some kind of it factor. Mm-hmm. So. And it's hard. To, it's hard to define it. It's really hard to define it. It's just like, it's like the supreme old Supreme Court definition of like obscenity. Like I know it when I see it. You know, okay. like that's mm-hmm. you know it when you see it. Like if you feel it, you feel it. That's kind of what it is. Mm-hmm. And actually, uh, I this may this may be because of like of how she's been used. But Bailey did not come across that way. Charlotte did, but Bailey did not. Um, so well, those, those are my those are my final thoughts. All right. Well, I think I've said all I need to say. I had a Tonya bomb, but it really wasn't. It was about race, not wrestling. I know, right? Yeah, it was tangentially related to wrestling. Yeah. Um, I had fun this week, even though, like, you know. You know what's been what went on yesterday, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I feel actually I feel better. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, glad to, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So, um, looking forward to the Iron Woman match. Hoping they set up stuff for Royal Rumble heading into WrestleMania. I'm actually looking forward to what they do with like AJ Styles and his situation. Yeah. Like. 
Yeah. Too injured. Do you think they take the belt off him early? No. Nope. No. Nope. Not. I so don't think there's a chance in hell. They definitely him and Cena at WrestleMania for the title. I I don't know if that's it. Like they might already have decided to like put the belt on Taker or something at Rumble or I don't know. But I don't think they'll be at a point where they're like unless he was out for like six months. But even if he's like yeah. all the way out through the Rumble, I think they just keep the title on him, like up until okay. the Rumble. You know, because there's SmackDown's not gonna like panic. You know. They can they can yeah. do things to get around it, and I mean Raw can too, but they just chose not to. Um, what was I going to say? I had one final thing I totally forgot. Oh, when you I I hope you go back and watch SmackDown because literally like Styles uh, Miz is out, and then Styles is the first person who actually comes out on the show, and like literally. Th- Five minutes into the show, I'm like dead on camera, and I'm just like, "Oh god, this is whole, this is ridiculous." So, when you go back, when you go back and <laughs> yeah, watch I'm SmackDown, sorry. just you know where I'm sitting, so just look for me, and you'll see me like constantly reacting to shit. It's it's pretty entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna find like uh, the whole episode somewhere on YouTube and watch yeah. it. It probably is tomorrow when I get off work. Yeah. So this has been fun. Uh, we'll see you guys on the flip side next week. We'll have more stuff to discuss, and hopefully, I'll actually get to watch SmackDown live. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, see you guys later. Bye-bye. Night. Bye bye.